Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Do you like horror films? Suspense? I got some yes, I got some no's. When I, when I was a teenager, when drive-ins were still around, me and my friends went to the drive-in. And we went to see, it was actually The Shining was out, so a horror movie. And it's, it's, I'm not big on horror movies, but when you're together, it's kind of neat because I can't remember how The Shining went, but I know some of them, you have, you have someone that's going to go down the stairs. Say a young girl's going to go down the stairs, and all of a sudden someone yells, don't go down there from another car over or in your own car. They're going to kill you. <laughs> and then... They start walking down the stairs, or they go, like that commercial says, behind the chainsaws. They hide behind the chainsaws. And the music starts playing. And it starts low, and it starts crescendoing up. And all of a sudden, bam! Jumps out, or you know, something happens. And everybody screams. And that's kind of the fun of those. It's, it's the suspense. You feed off of each other. Okay, you're probably wondering, what in the world does this have to do with the text? <laughs> the horror of it all. Now think about this. This is the Jesus... who when the... The three, the five virgins go out, the foolish ones, they go out and they go to find oil. The other five wise virgins aren't going to share. I thought we were taught to share. (laughs) Now, I could talk about the oil, the significance of the oil, which we really don't know exactly what that is. Why are there virgins? Are these lamps? Are these torches? You know, we could talk about all these little pieces in there. And I think if we did, we'd get lost. Because this is a parable. But this same Jesus, who when the five foolish virgins come back, now it doesn't say they knocked, unless I missed it in here. But they came to the door. And Jesus says, I don't know you. The same Jesus in Matthew 7 that says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be, the door will be opened. I don't know who you are. It's like, talk about horror, talk about shock. The same Jesus in Matthew 18 that will leave the 99 sheep and go find the one. Nope, the door's not opening. The door's staying shut. The whore, I don't know you. And he doesn't say just, I don't know you. He says, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Imagine the horror going on in their heads when the door is not opening. The whore that we see, Jesus healing the sick, binding up the brokenhearted, saying, I don't know you. He just did it before, and now it's, the door is shut. I don't know you. Here's a fact. Our bodies are decaying. I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> I don't have to tell you the obvious. Yesterday I got a shock when one of our um, employees who, because of COVID, he works through AERP for us out in Immokalee. He's worked for us for about six years. 
died suddenly at the age of 74 years old, it, death can be a shock, even though we know it's coming. The fact is we have a limited time. There will be a day when our hearts stop beating. There will be a day when we take our last breath. There will be a day when Jesus comes back to judge the quick and the dead. Sorry, I go back to the old hymnal. The living and the dead. <laughs> there will be a day. And if you look in this, we do not know the day or the hour. He comes like a thief in the night. it will be in a twinkle of an eye in an instant. The horror of it all. This text is used to shock us, to shock us back into reality. Everything that has happened in our country and around the world in the last eight months should shock us back to reality. Today, Sunday, we come to be the church in the midst of a world in turmoil and realize the world will be in turmoil until Jesus returns. But we come here to like the disciples did, come and hear Jesus. We come to sit at the feet of Jesus, to hear him, to have him teach us. Because when we hear, the door is shut, closed. Do you, did you hear it? Did you hear it inside? Here and here. The law comes to condemn us. I was going to have you all get your phones out and flip them so you can look at yourself. The law is like a mirror. <laughs> it comes to condemn us. There's a book I used in, uh, that we used in the seminary. It's called Eat This Book. I think I've talked about that before. And sometimes the word of God, the law, <laughs> is not very tasteful. But he does everything for our own good. To bring us back to repentance. To him. Because the world can suck us in. The world can suck us in. And that is why we come here and gather. Because you can see the foolish virgins and the wise virgins. Notice how the five foolish went out and they're searching for oil. Is that midnight? In Israel? <laughs> I don't think you're going to find much open in Israel. Today, let alone in ancient times. <laughs> but they're searching for oil. Be prepared. Hear his word. Rejoice in the law. Rejoice when he corrects us. Because we have forgiveness of sins with Jesus. He is the one that's doing it inside of us, everything, calling us when we were dead in our trespasses to him. We live because he lived, he died and he rose. We also will rise. But too often, too often, we see a God in our 
in our society, if he opens a door or closes a door, he opens another one. And if he closes both doors, he opens a window. The God of second chances. Eventually, the door shuts. God is working. He is here now in his son Jesus, his Holy Spirit. Working through his word, through baptism, water and the word, through Holy Communion, his body, blood, and the word combined. For wherever you have the word properly taught, preached, in his sacraments, properly given, he is there with us. Jesus will come again to judge the quick and the dead. the horror of the law. But that's only one side. (laughs) Then you hear the sweet music of what Jesus has done for us. That he died on the cross for our sins. That all, everything, because of his death and resurrection, all our worries, all our cares... We can lay at his feet, lay upon the cross. Choosing my words very carefully, especially after an election, or maybe it's not over, I'm not sure. (laughs) Doesn't matter what happens in the world. Because our home is with Jesus. We're just waiting here. It's like a waiting room. Trust in him. Jesus in Matthew over 30 times he says, truly I say to you, healing, he's teaching and forgiving. He's preparing us for a moment of grace, raising his children to fear him, to trust him. We live by faith, not by sight. He is shocking us into his arms, shocking us into repentance to receive his grace, the forgiveness of sins that he has for us. That no matter what we have done, if we are repentant, he says, You are forgiven. Shocking us to rely on him alone. To rely on him for our life here, that no matter what happens, it is for our good. That's tough sometimes. And we struggle with that. I struggle with that. And we walk by faith. And in repentance daily. Remembering that the Adam that was drowned in our baptism needs to be everly drowned every single day because he tries to get up and control us. But remember when Jesus said, I would never leave you, I would never forsake you. He'd be with us. He's with us in his word. He's with us in the body and blood and, and Holy Communion. And he came into our lives in the Holy Spirit in bap- Oops, in Immokalee, the baptismal fountains back there. 
in baptism. Walk by faith, knowing and trusting in all he does for us is for our good, even our suffering. But knowing that Jesus on that cross suffered the anguish, the pain that we deserve, he, he took it. And we accept that by faith. We believe that by faith, trusting in him. Walk by faith, knowing the one who will judge you and I most truly is the very same one that knows us most fully. You can take that two ways. But I say take that as gospel. Because in our faith in Jesus, we will be with him. He gives us the forgiveness of sins. He is the one working in us. He knows our hearts and our minds. He knows our struggles. So give it to him because he knows. And we will be with him. And when we come to that door, and I don't know if it's actually going to be a door or if that's a figurative, they're not going to have it. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be a gate. <laughs> but one thing I know, he will say, I know you. Welcome. Welcome. Now you can rest. Amen.